Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about mall rats from 1995. When I was a kid, and you had your local video store, you know, uh, not a blockbuster, like a video store that had a soul. And the video store, which was called Video Center in a house in Maryland or between Towson and Baltimore. And they had a thing where the parents could choose the option over whether your kids were allowed to rent R-rated movies if they were under 17. I think it was like 12 or 13, probably 13 when this came out on VHS. And uh, this is an R-rated movie. And under those rules, I guess I would not be allowed to see it, but uh, I'm sorry if I'm selling Video Center, which is no longer open out. Uh, but I just went, you know what? I'm just gonna try it. I'm gonna take the empty box to the video store and give it to the guy and see if they let me rent it. And he did. And I remember I got the tape and it was just the tape in a clear box and I could see R on it. And I was like, am I gonna get away with this? I paid my money. I was walking out and he said, hey kid. And then I just fucking ran home. <laughs> he could have said, here's your change. I don't remember because I didn't care. I was like, God. And I remember when he returned it, he did give me a look like you got away with this and I hope nobody complains. Basically, that is my entire nostalgia really for this movie. Um, I did grow up with this film and I do have a certain nostalgia for it. I tell you that story more because this movie isn't good. I don't want to make it out that I totally disregard my nostalgia because I do have a certain nostalgia for it. But watching it now, a lot of this movie doesn't work. It's pretty clear Kevin Smith was directing a bigger budget film and he was completely over his head. He didn't really know how to fully make a film like this and it kind of shows more of his faults than it shows his pros as a small time filmmaker like Clerks did certainly. And the critical reaction to this film is pretty accurate. I remember when I first saw this, I love this movie. I literally heard people quote it in comic book stores. I think I've mentioned that in other Kevin Smith reviews. Like I, I remember in a 90s comic book store, I actually heard people quote Kevin Smith's things to each other. It's like, if you were to make a 90s period piece in a comic book store, it would be like a scene you'd have in one of those, but it did like totally happen. I say this because the fan base like loves this film. Certain people like watch this film as teenagers. I get it. It's sort of one of those kind of mid 90s movies that didn't really get a lot of love in theaters, like, you know, Clueless or Empire Records or something like that. But I think those are like way better than this. The main thing with this film in comparison to Clerks, which at the time when this came out was the, his only other movie, is that in Clerks, you have Dante and Randall, they're stuck at the store all day, he wasn't supposed to be here today, and all the crazy shenanigans that happen in one day. Mallrats is very similar, it's a one day movie, they go to these two guys, T.S. and Brody, go to the mall after both are dumped by their girlfriends, get into all these shenanigans with a game show that's being shot at the mall, which is actually by T.S.'s girlfriend's dad, and she was supposed to, now has to be in this game show because he screwed up and uh, told the girl who was going to be in the game show about how TV adds 10 pounds and she's insecure about her weight, and uh, she dies doing laps, so she can't be on the game show, and they were supposed to go off to Florida, and so he, she's filling in to help her dad out, which to be honest, I don't understand why they can't try to reschedule because it sounds like the dad's in the bind, but TS isn't really understanding about that at all. And so she has to fill in for this game show. They go to the mall, they want to try to stop the game show or stop his girlfriend from being auctioned off at this like kind of dating game type show. And you run into various different characters in the mall, whether it's the fashionable male manager that Ben Affleck plays, Jane Silent Bob, Willem, who's trying to see a uh, in one of those three. 3D images, whether it's uh, Trisha who's writing a book on human sexuality, because that's the thing you see at a mall, I guess. Even Stan Lee is there uh, doing a signing. All the various kind of things going on that you'd usually see at the mall, and they're trying to kind of stop this game show and using Jay and Slam Bob to do so, and various other crazy situations happen. And I'm probably leaving a few characters out. But when I go into all that plot, which is very convoluted, I, I, I was thinking about like Kevin Smith's thing starts with clerks. And Mallrats is sort of the real beginning of what a Kevin Smith film would be. You know, the kind of like the color in his one, I mean, it's his first film in color, but how he used color in his films, how his films immediately, when he hits a bigger budget, are far less relatable and become more like kind of studio comedies. And I think a lot of this is because he's not a guy who like watches a lot of Godard movies or something. One of the production companies involved was called Alphaville. I'm going to say with some confidence, I don't think he's seen Alphaville 
or much Godard. Maybe he has, and he'll, you know, he said it in some interview or something, but I'm just gonna, you know, I don't think that's one of his influences, you know what I'm saying? And he's not an indie art house movie guy. He is a mainstream movie guy that happened to make, you know, a seminal, big, independent film. And if he had been the indie movie guy, and you're going to make a film like Mallrats, two guys going to the mall after they've both been broken up with their girlfriend and kind of like chilling out and sort of trying to figure out themselves. Honestly, I could relate to that. If someone told me that was a movie that was shot in the 90s about two, like these two guys, I'd be like, sign me up. That sounds awesome. That sounds like the follow-up from the guy from Clerks. I want to see that movie. And they just hang out and maybe they do see their girlfriends. You know, T.S. sees, you know, that um, Brandy... Is it Brandy? Whatever. Whoever Claire Filani plays. Brody sees Renee um, in the mall, you know, even dating the Ben Affleck uh, manager guy and stuff. And they kind of like mull over and think about life. And you just kind of get a picture of that day, much like Clerks was. And you can do various like bits like in Clerks and everything like that. But he doesn't stay within that same structure. He really just wants to make kind of like a big studio kind of comedy. I mean, it was $6 million, so it wasn't like that big of a studio comedy but it's someone who's influenced by mainstream cinema basically like hollywood cinema and i mean like the cheesier comedies that you rent and might have like a cool star charisma in them and that's about it and that's essentially what mall rats sort of is you know when the dating game stuff really doesn't work i sort of don't understand why singled out wasn't the dating show thing and he was just doing a version of singled out in a mall um but i also didn't live near a mall that used to do those things where they have like a you know Tiffany would play or something you know like I think that happened once and I chose to hang out with my friends and not do that so I didn't even see it but and so I can't even relate to that I know that did happen at some malls the idea of that is just so ridiculous and kind of hampers down this whole plot I think there are parts of this movie that work I think there are huge parts that don't work at all particularly the two leads or the two kind of the lead relationship which you can tell this movie even the poster knew Jason Lee and Shannon Doherty were far more charismatic and really the movie should have been about them than it was about the Jeremy London or T.S. and Brandy uh, who plays Claire Filani relationship because god they're like the most wet blanket kind of protagonist kind of actors he has sort of charisma he sort of works with Jason Lee He's not a really great actor. He looks like, looks wise, like a lead. Charisma wise, no. I can see why, like, I don't, I, maybe he's on a show or something I'm unaware of, but I can see why, like, I virtually don't hear anything about him. And Claire Filani is, like, so miscast in this. They're both very gorgeous people, but, like, the charisma wise, it just, like, doesn't really work at all. And I, and I, like, don't get why I have them in here. Whereas, like, Jason Lee, who, you know, was less of an experienced actor, is so charismatic, he's almost sort of like, the glue that fills this movie together and he almost became like kind of the hollywood version of what jeff anderson did in clerks basically and i think he sort of saw his moment much like brody does in this he like sees his moment becomes like you know a talk show host supposedly or whatever but in this movie you can tell like they got very lucky with jason lee because i remember people talking about how cool jason lee was quoting most of his lines he was the you know funny character he almost knew how to play every scene he almost makes jeremy london better by association he's very giving he like wants to go back and forth with people he he just he just gives this film so much it's 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 really insane how good he, he is in this i mean i think his character is like a jerk and he could be obnoxious but you can definitely like the whole time i was watching it was like i was mainly like when's jason lee back like i remembered how cool i thought he was at the time i don't think he's as cool now as someone who's probably older than he was when he made this movie i still i still thought he did a good job and i thought you know i could see why people thought after this film he had a future as an actor basically he just has this like natural charisma in it there's certain things that aren't established particularly like you never see michael rooker with claire filani and they're supposed to be father and daughter and that relationship supposed to be so key to this movie and you're like shouldn't there be like a scene of them together where you understand that dynamic which is like crux of this whole fucking movie i know there's like an extended cut like i don't I have no interest in seeing that because that's not like the movie I experienced all those times. I think it's like by someone who's very new at filmmaking. He was thrust into like possibly making like a smart porkies. I've heard the quote and everything like that. To me, it's like it goes against what made him special as a director. It's like trying to find like kind of a, like a really cliche, like kind of 90s 
teen romantic comedy and just like putting Kevin Smith crap over it and giving him like maybe a little more control. And I remember this was kind of considered the Kevin Smith sellout movie. I can't believe now it seems like a fucking joke that someone could sell out in a $6 million movie. But you know, that's the way the 90s were, guys. I remember that in Roger Ebert's review, and it kind of became a big quote that I heard people, because most people read Ebert and would look up on the internet uh, movies they'd seen that he'd reviewed, this quote that is like pretty, pretty harsh. I will say that. He says, and this is how he ends his Mallrats review, he says, the year that Clerks played at the Cannes Film Festival, I was the chairman of a panel discussing independent filmmakers. Most of them talked about their battles to stay free from Hollywood's play safe strategies, but Kevin Smith cheerfully said he'd be happy to do whatever the studios wanted if they pay for his films. At the time, I thought he was joking. That kind of says it all. I think he kind of learned to like kind of do his own image and regardless like this movie didn't open well i think it had a bad release date i'm never going to do a how did mall rats bomb but i don't think in october was the greatest release uh time for a film like this i think a summer release might have been a little bit better but obviously this got discovered on home video and on tv and all those things the audience found it eventually but i'd also say most of the people who wanted to see it who were like you know i was 13 i couldn't see it in the theater if i wanted to it didn't play at a ton of screens either gramercy was kind of a small release in this i think it was like like within a year they screwed up the release of ball rats and the mystery science theater movie so kudos to you gramercy for shitting on my childhood when you had all these independent film directors most of them had the sophomore slump things of that nature but i think what happened with kevin smith is he you know became a bigger director he was on a lot of critics top 10 lists i would say like number 10 9 or so forth but he still got on there for clerks it was a big cultural kind of thing it wasn't a huge hit but cinephile wise it went pretty far and so he came out with this movie i don't think he was there yet i think like you know maybe his skills were better for you know at least film wise i haven't reviewed it yet like a chasing amy made a little more sense than doing this right off the bat i think he was like a little too early to do kind of a bigger even though it wasn't that much bigger kind of a movie and also it's just like he just didn't establish it well what worked about before is he just did so little things and he got like these little pieces to work but then like when he has like all these different people and pieces and everything like that it just completely falls apart because he's just not playing in any sort of a relatable world and I'd even say this has ties to like why kevin smith i think sort of lost his audience at a certain point because he just isn't really concerned with relatability he's concerned with kind of like making this film be as like sort of funny and wacky and trying to like get it to be clever or something like that but ultimately like that's not what worked about him you know that's not like worked about clerks it's like an amazement he used that problem solving to become this awesome movie and Mallrats, he didn't have the need for the same kind of problem solving but i wish he had had the same spirit in trying to figure out a movie like this but got you know elevated because i remember how cool it was to hear people make jokes about variant covers and like make nerd references and i know i just like shat on welcome to eltingville but like this really did feel like like an adult movie that like talked about those things just sound really cool and crazy and it was pretty unique but i just don't think this movie had the goods to like pull all of that off i think he had the opportunity he had stan lee he figured out ben affleck way before anyone else did mostly that he's a jerk he met ben affleck and he was able to do stuff with that like there was a lot of like cool things he could springboard off from this in fact like you could say the stan lee cameo is actually really great i still like the stan lee cameo it might be the best stan lee cameo i don't i've never ranked them but it would be up there for me i know it got referenced in captain marvel recently but that stan lee cameo is really good stan lee's actually really great in it despite like he didn't really talk in his cameos after that for like almost like 10 years or something like that and it's pretty clear he has a certain screen chemistry especially with jason lee i think Mallrats has a lot of really shining parts in it what really hit me watching clerks and watching this and i haven't watched them in a while and like sort of why i'm reviewing these is sort of like dealing with my own nostalgia like there's certain things i think people are very nostalgic for the 90s i've never been that same way because i kind of like almost like see these things i get a little embarrassed but when i look at it now i get why i was so excited by it like these were essentially like grown-up kids are in college who i'd see in a comic book store I'd see them maybe say the f word too many times make you know references to comics i think they're so cool so if i was 13 there's a movie like this i was gonna love it regardless just because of what it was and like put all these ethos on it and how cool they were and how i'd love to have a room like that just for the comedy central sign but also for all the posters um and having all those comics and i mean my basement did look like that but that's because of my dad but all of that meant a lot you know to me at the time but looking at it as a movie person everything like that i think what kevin smith screwed up is ruining the indie spirit that people loved him for at the time and he had a really relatable 
simple style that worked. It was like a day someone wasn't supposed to be there. It was a shitty day at work, and that was the movie. And Mallrats could have done that. The, the, the DNA is there. And that's kind of what upsets me, because thinking about the movie that would have been those two hanging out in a mall that's like the same structure of cl as Clerks, that's more of an in-between movie between this and Chasing Amy, that sounds amazing. If I could go back in time and be like, don't take the money. I mean, take the money, but like make it better. I wish that would have happened. Instead, you get this kind of like very studio 90s comedy. It's very middling. Michael Rooker might be cool. Stan Lee has a great cameo. You have Jason Lee. You have Ben Affleck. But you have like too many things that just hurt it so heavily. Like Jay and Silent Bob, like what are they doing there? Are they dealing drugs still? I'm confused about that. It's trying to like do this whole dating game show. Single that was blowing up at the time. But like why have that in there? Why have this whole structure of it? Like why not explain points further and relationships more than just like, you know, having Jason Lee tell stories about like his cousin Walter or whatever, even though those might be funny and he can deliver the fuck out of them. But you just come to the end of these things and going like, you know what? I don't think this movie sort of works overall. I think it just kind of like limps to the finish line and has enough to get through it. Especially like the end when everyone's cheering. I was like, this movie's like, should be on fucking, you know, a USA TV movie or something. Like I always have felt that way about that clapping at the end. Even when I sort of like was a little more, you know, apologetic and nicer to this movie. I was like, that that is a little cheesy. And he just like kind of like leads into the, like the classic kind of 80s comedy cheese and just like doesn't really escape himself he does it in sort of a kevin smith way but i don't think he really knew he was as a filmmaker and what his brand was as a filmmaker in terms of style i think he understood it in terms of dialogue but regardless that clerks like you say it has no style it has a certain amount of style and mall rats doesn't mall rats is just 90s movie and i know clerks is a 90s movie but this just felt like a low budget studio 90s movie and sure it had way more nerd cred than any of those ever did but i sort of wish he had sort of figured out how to bring an indie spirit to one of those rather than just add kevin smith dialogue to one of those and i think that was the disappointing thing when we all maybe realized maybe this guy wasn't the interesting filmmaker we thought he was that we got glimpses from clerks because this was sort of a big disappointing sophomore thing and it's also disappointing to revisit this and go, sure, Jason Lee's cool. Sure, you have the Stan Lee cameo. Sure, I, I even like the 90s soundtrack and stuff. But I don't really think this is a good movie. And it was it's sort of such a come down from Clerks, especially if you're watching them in a row, especially if you know more about filmmaking, that you can't help but feel, you know, a little disappointed and kind of feel like, man, maybe Kevin Smith did sell out. And I remember people saying that, I don't really entirely remember that feeling because this is almost my first exposure to him. You know, I, I, I didn't start with Clerks in my life. I started with this one and I was blown away by this whole thing and glad I got to see it. But in the end, I think it's kind of one of those nostalgic things that, you know, I, I can remember the time. I can remember getting away with renting that R-rated movie. And I can remember that feeling and how cool it felt and like knowing my parents weren't there. I don't know, who knows what everyone else was doing, but I could get away with watching that movie and how fun that was. But I kind of am just glad I had that afternoon. And I don't really need to revisit this movie anymore because there's not any more secrets than there already have been other than sort of just revisiting my nostalgia in a kind of a subpar movie that has a little bit of Shining Moments and Stan Lee. So if you've seen Mallrats and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.